Don't mind me. Just uh, opening a web page and figure out what I'm doing. I'm going to want to get some music going as well. I've got some tea to make, which I'm going to go and make forthwith. Even fifth with, if you're good. Here's the music, and then I open something more chill. Maybe this one. Guitars. A little faster. Let's do this one. who's joining me because this is a bit of a momentous day this is the day we finish all of the windows compiles I will be with you in just a moment hey there I'm not guzzling coffee today but I have a cup of tea and this is going to be chai tea so I'm going to go and uh, put some oat creamer in it and a bit of sweetener and then I'll be ready to join you. That's pretty good. Try. It's a little hot, so I'm going to let it cool off. And like I said, today we are finishing the Windows builds. In fact, if things go well, and I think they probably will, there's no reason to think they won't, I am going to be uploading the collections of Windows uh, things on stream. In fact, I'm going to have everything done but the uh, Mac sign stuff, which I'm not thrilled about, but that takes time as well. And this is one of the stages I'm in. So we're doing the same process we've been doing this entire time. Stretch and get ready. <laughs> and while I'm doing this, we can talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's come to light through the questions 
had for people on Patreon. And of course, there'll be many pauses because I must do this first. I could just talk, but then I wouldn't be getting this done. However, the fact that I'm down already up to the T's means that I'm more than a three quarters finished. Maybe more than seven eighths finished with everything. And we're going to see the end of these by the end of today's stream. Like this. I got that. There are a number of things that have been going on in the the Patreon questions. And it's particularly interesting with regard to some of the choices that are happening. Because I'm asking people what they want to see out of these live streams. And I've assumed that it's going to be mostly coding, although like if I was coding a plugin a day and doing three streams of that, then that's more than I need for posting a plugin a week. That said, that's not necessarily how it's shaping up. People seem more interested in getting like tones and patches from me or seeing how to do that than in just getting more coding. Uh, Stan sees? Yes, yes, I have indeed been checking that out. I think it will be interesting, and I have in fact promised to support it by the end of this year. I don't know whether that's a realistic promise. It might be, we'll see. If it's, if it's impossible for me to do, then that's not gonna be possible, but I have not only heard of it, I promise to support it by the end of the year. And that's gonna be a whole thing. Mind you, note that I'm not promising to port all of these things to, the, to that. But I could have anything that I do going forward be on that format, which is a distinction. Like with this, the reason this has been such a chore is that it's 290 plugins, my entire library. That's all open source code. It's MIT licensed. If somebody wanted to port all of the plugins I have out there to Clap, they could do so. They probably won't. It's probably gonna be up to me and it's a matter of whether some of these things are actually possible to do at all or not. Like updating all of these with higher CPU efficiency and fixing the problem with RAND is uh, a doable thing and that's why it's happening. Doing clap versions of all of this might or might not be possible. It depends upon how much work it is to do and what formats I try to do it on. Oh yeah, well, I mean, host would have to support it too. I think it's not impossible that, uh, that uh, Reaper might start doing it. I don't know anybody at Reaper. But I mean, that's an independent thing. They don't have a format of their own, unlike Apple, unlike Steinberg. So you never can tell. I've recently posted on a uh, thread for Cubase, interestingly. I'll want to go and look at how that went, um, whether I got myself in trouble or not. On the Gearspace forums, there is a place where people were talking about their abandoning VST 2.4 um, plugins for Mac M1. And they're still kind of sort of supporting VST 2 on some things, but they've ditched it for the M1 builds. Well, all of my VST 2s are available as Mac M1. In fact, there's no benefit from, well, little benefit from the upgrades I'm doing because M1 seems to be able to do all of the different uh, sam uh, bus lengths with equal capability. 
going to pad that a little bit. The, the bass was a little bit too intense. I know, too intense bass, really? So, there was a fellow on this kid bass thread who was like, well, shouldn't we just be grateful to Steinberg? For because people who are just only releasing VST2s are garbage, and so they should be punished. And I was like, oh, hi. And I explained what, where things were at. It's a slightly stressful situation to be in. I think I handled myself well enough. I could take a moment and have a look. Why don't I do that? I mean, I literally have a web browser open. So, firstly, where have I got to? Got to tape delay 2. Next one is, of course, tape dither. And then in another window here, I'm going to pause this so it doesn't eat as much CPU and have a quick glance because I've been compiling these all morning. And so I had to have a bit of a lie down. I lay down for about 20 minutes. I would like to see what kinds of responses. I got a couple of upvotes on that. What I said in this thread was, oh hi, I'm currently recompiling a 290 plugin library of my past and current work to give close to twice the performance in Intel processors and to run seamlessly and correctly on the newest Mac M1 processors, code signed and ready to go. All these recompiles, complete with fixes that replace rand calls from the older plugins, which blocks execution on Linux, are not just this year, but this week. It's called maintenance, support from our users, and backward compatibility, right back to Mac PPC machines, in fact. I grant you that it is more work to do this. It sure is. All the Windows plugins and all the Linux plugins that are getting sufficient, significant upgrades to their internal random noise generation, plus the near doubling of their efficiency, especially on 64-bit buses, which I've chosen to switch to, are VST 2.4. I am not licensed to release VST 3. My contract with Steinberg is strictly for VST 2.4. I don't feel at all safe signing off in an agreement to release VST 3 because of some actions they take in the past with regard to deprecating their earlier format, an action I don't approve of and which isn't in line with my values as a developer. I will respectfully continue releasing the VST 2.4 that I'm legally allowed to make, including for the very newest M1 Max, and including my newest plugins as long as they're in the no GUI format I generally use for audio processors. Were I to release GUI things like meters, it would have to be a separate thing, but as things stand, I see no way forward here apart from jumping ships to newer formats, which we will not speak of here. By that I mean clap. I hope Steinberg reconsiders because I have no option but to stand my ground here. So people are uh, doubling down on their point of view. I have nothing to say about that. I mean, if Steinberg wants to put me out of business, I'll have to find something else to do. I think that's somewhat implausible, and nothing is stopping me from continuing to do what I do. We got some Steinberg fanboys chiming in. And then people have moved on. And there's a poster named FunkyBot who is saying this is 100% a Steinberg decision. They're trying to force developers to drop VST2 in favor of VST3 by changing the licensing terms and using some strong-arm tactics. You may not be aware of this, and Steinberg certainly puts their own rosy spin on things, which is my polite way of saying they're deliberately putting out misleading statements, says FunkyBot. So there's been a lot of bad information. There's no technological limitation that prevents VST from working on ARM systems, which of course it is not. VST3 is a new format. 
and Steinberg has changed license terms to prevent Nuva developers who create VSD3 from being able to create VSD2 plugins. And what I was referring to was that Steinberg has gone a step further to try to prevent the creation of VSD2 plugins by a changing licensing terms, which applies to the VSD3 license, which I did not sign off on. So that's the thing. It's like, uh, I didn't sign off on VSD3. For that reason, I'm still able to use VSD2. They can't change the rules and force me to get rid of all of the 290 plugins I have made that support other platforms than Mac on VSD3. I mean, too. I can still do that as long as I don't sign off in another contract that gives them the power to change that around. So that's been my choice, is to stick with what I've got going on, and then I'll see what they do about all of that. This also means supporting people on older machines that might not run the newest versions of uh, DAWs that are running, say, VSC3, or won't do it efficiently. And all of this is very stressful, yes, but uh, there was a time when if you got a VST3 license, it would sunset your VST2.4 license. That, I believe, they backed off on, but I can't guarantee that they wouldn't whip that back out at some point. And because of that move, which is not currently up to date, that's not currently what they're doing, but they have done it in the past. That broke my trust in what they were doing. So here we are. And yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, I've got this whole library, right? And when I asked Patreon what I should be doing with my time, oh, I just fucked up, didn't I? See, this is why I need to be careful about what I'm doing. Build that again, please. I think it did, so I think that's probably fine. I just, I, I derped up. Hey, Mel. Okay. 64-bit is going to be 142K. 32-bit should be about 120. That's what that is. So I think we're probably good there. I built it as 64-bit by mistake. I just renamed it. But we have just gone and done it again. But yeah, when asking people what they wanted out of me on Patreon, I got a bunch of interesting answers. And some of them that were the most striking is that people really, they basically, rather than just getting an endless stream of new plugins, they want to be shown what the things they can do with these plugins, or indeed other free software. So I mentioned doing uh, tones on Surge, and uh, people were fairly interested in that, and I am actually set up to be able to do it, to some extent anyhow. There are some limitations, but on the whole, I'm set up to be able to do that. When I asked about what to do musically with the not all the time, but some of the time music jams that I do, people were more interested in me arranging and manufacturing music that was more worked out and uh, less interested in being constantly entertained by a continuous flow of like jammy stuff, which is what I'm using right now as a background music. This is what I can do if I need to manage this Blinky Lights machine and get it making noise and music and just uh, set it playing and get it going. Like I can do that in many different ways, in many different genres. And in general, it was not as interesting to people as the idea that I could do more complex arrangements and make actual songs. And uh, that suits my needs and feelings as well, because I would like to shift over to, like, there have been times when I have uh, done music. In fact, maybe I could actually 
long as I'm doing this, right? I've just copied this over. I can delete that and get ready to move on to the next thing. But I can switch over from this and look into opening something else. Let's see. Chris Music and not 217, I think it's more like 27, 214 or 15. So yeah, and and this is a bit of a weird thing because it's very experimental. But even though I've got this kind of thing here, let's take a moment. And this is what I did in 2017 as part of a project where I was trying to do arrangements. In particular, I was using rock instrumentation and doing progressive rock arrangements. I, I played this for my significant other and she was like, hmm, I like this. Uh, Tell me what you think. I made this up. Interesting thing is this is way before I got a lot of practice in a bunch of other things. This is very limited compared to what I could do now. bunch of different sections. There's a bunch of different riffs. Like, this is what I'm suggesting that I'm doing, except for hopefully better. There are many choices in here that I could do differently. I'm going to 
course, that riff. Pretty much everything here could be done better now. I have no score for this. I don't even remember how I made this happen. I remember a little bit about it. Hello, what's happened here? Oh, I changed up in this one. Not only that, I screwed up. Let's go in and do that some more. I guess that's my tip off that something went wrong. Let's go to and try to do it right this time. This shouldn't be breaking anything, the fact that I broke this and didn't do it right. Well, it's a little aggressive. Alright, 123k and 145k. That does appear to be about right. So with luck, that will have worked fine, even though I did it in an awkward way that it wasn't commensurate with how I would want to do it. Similarly, this music is in an awkward way that's not commensurate with how I would want to do it. Like, all the stuff that I'm doing with these cards is designed to be able to manufacture stuff like this that's more interesting and generally better. I've been evolving this over the years, and you haven't seen much in the way of me putting it into action. So, one of the things people are asking for is essentially, though you don't know it, me doing this kind of thing, but probably more synthetic, more keyboardy. And, and better. That's an 11. And if I program it on the sequencer, I don't have to rely entirely on being able to play guitars accurately for it. This is back when all I had going on was guitars. And it was also such a struggle that I did a few of these and then I just had to quit. But the hope is to go forwards into a place where I'm able to do stuff consistently, and rather than getting burnt out by it, it just becomes the flow. Like, I mean, I've been able to recompile hundreds and hundreds of these plugins, and I'm not going splat, I'm just looking forward to the workload lightening up a little bit once I'm no longer recompiling hundreds and hundreds of plugins, which I think is reasonable. I got to where I could do music, and this was also not streamed. My hope is that I can get together a situation where I can be streaming, and also be able to stream things like, you know, laying down drum tracks and things. We'll see. But it's certainly the hope. Two Tape 7 needs to come out. I'm going to need a 2 tape 7. And back to this. I'm peeking around, seeing how I can fiddle with this game. 
just a moment. That's enough of a pad that it'll be satisfactory. Okay, what do we just build? We just built the 32, so option F4. But this is still what we're doing today. So yeah, there's no reason I can't take instrumentation or systems like this and do that kind of arrangement with it. It would be a lot better. It's just that it would involve stopping a lot or setting up something that was playing through a giant loop and constructing it so that it started manipulating everything. I might or might not be moving to Reaper for doing the tracking because multi-tracking and uh, capture of multi-track stuff is more inclined to be suitable in an actual multi-track program. Bespoke is not as much a multi-track program as it is a giant modular synth, which is what I like about it, but... Want me to play that for you, Mel? I know you've been looking for it. Everybody's heard Alien Kittens a million, billion, zillion times, but not necessarily the other. So I feel like uh, giving you a little present and playing that for you. That would have been 2017 or so, yep. Let's take a little pause from that, and I'm going to play Empty Pictures from for Mel. Oh, now I remember, it was just a jam. It's a groove. Nothing wrong with grooves, though. Chuck, chuck, there you go. See, this stopped because it wasn't arranged enough. Yep, that guitar sound is your Robert Fripp solo time. It's a particular approach to making that happen. Slightly sloppy lead guitar. Some definite shred going on in there, though. Thing is, like. Nothing else is happening here, and that's why I didn't end up liking it. This is the same riff throughout. I need to do more than just that. There's no changes in density. It's just one jam continuing through. Well, you were completely fine with having that it be that. Nothing wrong with that. My point being, for me to go forward with this kind of thing, which I can certainly do, firstly, I do well to have more stuff be sequenced, because I can play over sequenced stuff fairly well, but it's easier to arrange things and, and make it play elaborate stuff if I can program half of it. 
and secondly, this needs to be like one section in a multi-section song that does multiple different things. It's got some evolution in it, but... Bass would be better if I had been playing it on my rig. I didn't own it at the time. This is a, a different non-rig bass tone. Which I can do. I can do this tone that I'm using better now. Pretty much everything in here I can. over to just background noise. So there you have it. So what poses challenges for me about something like that is that it is an attempt to make an arranged structure out of multiple uh, passes of instruments improvising over a multi-track and they can't hear each other so much. I mean, I can hear stuff into it. But they're trying to do what would be arrangement, but they're just trying to kind of make it happen out of nothing. If it was a band, everybody would start interacting with each other, but it can't be because it's multi-tracked. Now, when I work with the synthesizers, to some extent, I can fool with those and have them start doing things that are maybe unexpected and then react to that. And if I do arrangement from scratch, and there are more recent things that I've done like that too. Did I just copy this over? Me talking about stuff always distracts me and makes me stop being able to do the actual work that I have to do. But everything has its place. Regardless, even if I can't finish this today because I'm too busy talking, I will finish it today because I'll keep doing it afterwards. So when I'm doing something like Empty Pictures, the, the soulfulness in it is me trying to rise above the limitations that it presents. When you have a real song, like, I don't know, something, something that is much more popularly accessible, like Eagles Hotel California or whatever, you've got soulfulness built into guitar solos at the end. And it's a slightly more confined, like there's no dead spots. There's something, okay, you have four bars. Do your soulfulness here. And those that kind of structure is very powerful. Like things like I'm drawing these little pictures as far as like songwriting things are concerned. So it's a picture of the sound builds up to this and then you've got this large block of something which transitions into a large block of something else. Or actually it goes the opposite direction, doesn't it? Builds up into a sort of ambiguous space and then there's a large block of something which is kind of abstract and then it goes to a large block of something that's much heavier and similar. And then we abruptly switch back to a similar thing that we started with. These parts are like the uh, arrangement of uh, Close to the Edge, where it builds up into background sound, bursts into something, does a whole thing, and then goes back into the background sound in the end. But it's generated through my little card thing. 
And if I could do whatever I'm able to do in the context of a structure like that, it will immediately become more interesting. And by that, I mean, I'm sure it will still make you happy as far as being able to sometimes come up with something that you figure is soulful, that you figure is memorable and that you like. But it'll also reach more people because there's more going on with it. And if I can teach people or show people how to do that, then you should do it yourself. There's a lot of stuff that can happen. There are many things that you can do in music and creativity. But my job is both doing those things and observing how it is I'm doing them so that if I'm finding limitations or faults or issues with some of it, then I can go and uh, analyze that. And again, like, this is serving a purpose because now I've got a whole bunch of background music thingies where I can just put it on, it'll go for like 70 minutes. The most recent ones I've been doing at the length of a CD so that I could listen to them in the car at high quality if I wanted to, which is like fair enough, why wouldn't I? But it does fill a specific purpose that is not exclusive to this kind of thing, but it's well suited to, this is what we do when we put on background music of some kind or other. You select something that you like and we now have a kind of space. It's like dropping into a jazz club where you're listening to the piano and the drums and the bassist, just so upright bass, horn players, and they're doing their thing. You have a rough sense of what that actually is going to be. And then you can just sort of stay there through the whole experience, knowing that it's going to continue, that it's going to keep going. So that's what I've been doing here, and on the Patreon poll, I found out that people are less interested in watching me do this, even though you could say that it was a continuous stretch of entertaining music. They're kind of interested in what I would do if I constructed things like that uh, progressive rock piece. And that doesn't mean people always like everything that I might do, but there are th like, if I was to do a hybrid between what I was doing then and the stuff that I've got on tap here, which is a bigger, broader, more generally pleasing sound rather than being a little kind of weedy and harsh. When I lean on the guitars, I often want the guitars to be very aggressive. And people have complained about that, other people like it. But it's kind of how I do that, which is why a lot of the plugins that I make are more like mixing console style plugins rather than another plugin to get a guitar sound that I love because other people might not love that guitar sound, but it will find its place in its relative context. Guitar is usually the thing that I need to use to get really loud or to get really aggressive. As you can hear, I've got a bunch of other sounds going on which are serving other purposes and are not needing to be aggressive. Well, I think it's fair for people to want to grab plugins for free and without iLock. Although I would also point out that the iLock people are also the people who are in control of Juice. So when people want me to do graphic user interface, uh, be careful what you wish for. Because there's an entanglement there. For one thing, it would compel me to run on uh, the GPL license. But I can do that in its own context. <laughs> I'm also not sure if I'm going to have a Windows outlet for such plugins because of this business with uh, Steinberg changing the rules around uh, VST. Because I kind of depend upon them allowing people to still use the same plugins we've been using all our lives. And if that's off the table, that's a big problem. And if them being able to make new licensing terms means that they could like revoke licenses that I legitimately have, that's a big problem too. I can't allow that. So it becomes 
a bit of a big mess. And the hope is that I will always be able to find something to do that people consider worthy of me doing. But in these are changing times. There's a lot going on and it's hard to know where things are going. I prefer to be the person in the middle of all that who is giving you an anchor and showing you what you can continue to have in such a way that it's a reasonable promise. Sticking to the choice of making things still be available rather than conning people, taking things away from them, tricking them, screwing them over. Don't like that kind of behavior. Which is not to say that specifically Steinberg is specifically that. Oh yeah, well people want all kinds of things. Like one of the reasons that I'm not able to go to the SB1200, that I'm not able to do sampling plugins based on the most boutique expensive things that you can get is because the way I do things doesn't permit for that. Like I could also be doing this and refusing to let people have any of it unless they coughed up a bunch of money. There are multiple ways of doing that. They're generally fairly well accepted even. Uh, I've chosen not to do that because my uh, loyalties are elsewhere. But it's directly impeding my ability to do certain things. It's also very interesting the way that kind of stuff works out because technically, and I'm not sure this is true for me specifically, but technically, there's people where you'll pay them money to watch them play with their toys. Like, you know, my, my synth there. I don't think I do styles of music that are that compelling that people have really latched onto it so much. But you can get people who have like $200,000 worth of uh, synth equipment and you know people will pay to watch them play with their toys without actually having them I would prefer to have people get toys of their own and all that but it is absolutely true people will Hang on, hang on, hang on. What am I doing? Let's not do that, shall we? I get confused. Oh, well, the thing is, if I, if I do that, then nobody will buy them because they're used to my things being for free. If I do, like, GUI plugins with a really neat interface and so on, using some of the same stuff that I've got, but no, not exactly clones of anything that I have, and sold those entirely commercially, um, it would have to be at a reasonable price and I would go right back to what I had before Perhaps with slightly better distribution No, thanks to Steinberg, which is the reason why I probably can't but um, It's not necessarily a given like I ran for 10 years as a commercial software operation with strong opinions about not being a jerk about copy protection and so on and what I did worked reasonably well. In fact, there were months that I made like $4,000. And there were other months that I made 200 Trying to do like new stuff and selling it is very sketchy. Because what's going to happen is it's a boom and bust cycle and you're going to be sucked into trying to do the thing that is going to be bringing you the more money and that is a trap stops you from being able to pursue actually new things. I don't see why I would cooperate with Plugin Alliance. I don't know what they are. So one of the things that's been on my mind lately, and oh, what am I, I keep doing the wrong thing. Can I stop doing that thing, please? One of the things that's been on my mind is uh, building hardware because 
if I build hardware, nobody can expect that it has to be free because you can't literally copy it. Instead, if I build hardware, then I can make that be a price because that is a reasonable suggestion for something that is hardware that I had to pay for the physical materials and spend my time to assemble. The question becomes, what kind of price? And I have an innovative idea around that as well. I guess we'll see whether it actually becomes a thing. And if so, whether that is uh, relevant to anybody or is just crispy and weird again, because that is sometimes a risk. The plan that I have in mind for that is to build stuff guitar stomp boxes I think first I believe I can do one that has everything that one would want yay we're up to you law and that would be the desert bus pricing being that it is X amount to start off with hopefully accessible to people who are actively following uh, my streams and things like, you know, I could call you folks personal friends, personal friends, patrons, like that. But then, the uh, each new one that I made would be 7% more expensive than the previous. And what that does is I get to start at a lower price and it will gradually increase to what the market will bear. And then it will increase past that to the point where people increasingly think it is not worth what I'm asking for it, at which point they stop asking for more of them and I stop having to make more of them. So it's a built-in limited edition based on the uh, going price for buying one from me being a scaling thing based on how many I've done. It's also a little bit like the um, tractor pulls where you know your tractor is roaring along, it's dragging this giant sled with a weight that pushes increasingly hard, slowing it down and making it stop. So inevitably the, the tractor and the tractor pole will stop because the weight's gonna increase upon it until it can't do anything but stop. The question is, is that a moral choice with pricing? I'd like to think so because it would do a good job of managing some of my needs as far as spending my time building physical objects. Oh, did you spot that? That's cool. More power to him. So it very much becomes a matter of can I sell this model as a moral pricing option? on the basis of it being like a limited edition. Because that's the thing, where if I have multiple things being sold, it will naturally find a distribution where the stuff that's not really very popular, and this is getting loud, so let me tone it down. I'm making a lot of noise. I just stopped having a damn thing to say. I don't remember where I was at, but I remember where this was at. If you want to remind me about what I was talking about, feel free. I got some other stuff to do, so we're gonna do that. It's into a question of whether that's a moral pricing model to be doing it that way. If it's a moral pricing model and if people are able to cope with that idea, then there's no problem. If it just makes people mad, well inevitably it will make people mad because it will escalate to the point where somebody will be like, that's cool, I'd like one of those. And I would turn around and say, I will be, I will be happy to make one of those for you for this much, and they'll go, 
that's really not fair. Some You made one for somebody last year, and it was this price, and I, I will say, and now it's this price, and that's the rule. And, you know, how does that... There, there are some positives about that arrangement. Like, one of the positives about that arrangement is, like, why don't you go and find the person that... I sold that to last year and buy it from them for the price that they paid. They might not be willing to sell it for the price that they paid because as far as they're concerned, the price of reacquiring it has just gone up. But it's really the question of whether it is a moral thing to have a, a squishy pricing model like that that is rigid, pre-established, fixed but is weird in that way. It's like it's never the same twice. It's always going to be different for each one. If that's okay, then it's probably a good choice. And if it was that, I'd be able to weather not being able to make VST2s anymore, supposing that Steinberg finds some way to pull my license from me and refuses to ever let me make VST 2.4s anymore, even if I signed off on that and have a contract. Supposing they break the contract, so they prohibit me from making any of their plugins for any reason. That would put a bit of a damper on me being able to service anything but Apple customers. Unless, of course, the format clap comes around, at which point that changes everything. I have pretty much no problem being a point guy on that situation because I'm that unhappy with how it worked out in practice. Ah, ultrasonic light and medium, the This Was a Mistake plugins. Still, I made them, so I'll support them. There's almost certainly going to be somebody out there who's like, this sounds best to me. Option F4. We're doing pretty well. We're already all the way to you. About an hour in. No. No, Mel, that's not how I roll. Software that can be copied without costing me anything should not be boutique priced, I don't think. I like making that stuff available much like communicating in words it doesn't require you to spend money for the words necessarily. I have no objection to charging for like educational materials. If I was making videos showing people how to do things, those could live on a special site. And I don't know whether there's a prospect for charging for like evergreens. That's something where I've been profoundly blocked because I can't do that on YouTube. Content ID screws me over pretty hard. And it gets in the way of some of the more desirable ones that you can do. That's about how that works. There are, there are many questions, and especially as I pursue a course in life that could lead to me moving to Canada, there are reasons why I would need to be able to take advantage of being able to work and earn money doing what I do. I don't necessarily deserve to live in poverty 
having nothing. Of course, I don't have nothing, but if I got into a situation where I had to sell everything that I owned because I was starving, arguably not great. Arguably the stuff that I've done uh, earns me more than that. And then it's the uh, implementation details as to like, oh, you think so? Well, then what exactly would you do? And we'll see. Like, I mean, unboxing videos of fancy toys, I don't think is my brand. Teaching people and showing people how to do stuff is a lot more my brand. There are probably ways of doing that. You could even do like, people do a podcast to get paid more than me, you know? Because whatever, the, oh, hello. That's not right at all, is it? Let's go back and do that over. Something is wrong with this. I'm not quite sure what it was. We're gonna find out. Settings and controls here are terribly wrong. All right, so that needs to not say debug. I don't know why it said debug. is probably all I need to know though. And now we do the usual sequence rather than the reverse sequence. Usual sequence is doing the 32-bit first and then doing the 64-bit. rather an interesting jam at this point, doing a bunch of weird stuff. Okay, let's see, how do we close this? Alt F4. That's the one I want, release. There we go. We got back, we got back to what we were doing. Falling apart in big chunks as I reach down at the end, but I'm, if we get there, everybody gets the uh, Windows downloads before I'm done with the stream. I will put it up as a zip file. Ugh. Yeah, and a, a gentle note, Mel, um, if you were seeing, if you were here saying that my plugin should be $990 and nobody else is here, maybe that's not what I should be doing. If there were like 50 of you on the stream and you were all saying that, that might be something that I would be more inclined to listen to, but I gotta kinda chalk you up as like, your amount of fervor is truly inspiring. Well, at the same time, it doesn't look like that's something that I can do under any circumstances. Because I don't think you're proposing to buy it. <laughs> so, comes down to practicalities like that sometimes. Try to use yummy anyway. So it's going to be interesting. Like, I think also just the next couple of weeks is going to be interesting because I'm continuing this stream thing. And I'm looking into what people are asking for as far as the streams go. You know, as I finish this up, I think some of the streams are going to be like, you know, strictly one to three. And uh, we'll go from there. But um, I'm looking into what do I need to do in order to move into what's going to work for people. Because what I'm doing, it works for the people who I'm doing it for currently. But the streaming, that's going to be more interesting. There's more going on there. 
Oh, I thought you said $990. Well, here's the thing. Like, you can say that you think $99 is okay for a plugin, but I'm not willing to do some of the things that people do to, you know, copy protect that stuff, nor have I ever done it. My stuff is open source, so if you're clever enough, you can build them yourself. I encourage doing that. I think people should experiment with software themselves. That means I need to do something else. I think $99 would be a good start for, you know, hardware. I'll make a, a stomp box, for instance, and the first one can start at $99, because that it has a, a fair feel for something that would actually be good and work and be you know, desire, desirable. I don't think I need to start as low as 50. I have been thinking in terms of wanting to do hardware and start it at 50 and have that be the desert best pricing growing up from there, meaning that all the early ones would be under $100, which is cool, but it's still just me, like, people make plugins under $100, and they do that by being a factory. I'm not a factory. Everything that I'm doing is literally handmade, handcrafted, and will remain, you know, we'll, we'll see more about how that develops as it goes. Among the things I've got to do is figure out an aesthetic and ways of doing it where I have a adequate design that is sufficiently air windows out, you know, and it needs to be cool, it needs to be unique, and it needs to do the stuff that I need it to do. That is something that I, I could make those. Not too hard. Not too hard. The question is what kind of long tone? I've demonstrated that in some of my guitar stuff. Like I can give you a long tone that is warmer and more fluid, or I can give you a long tone where the high frequencies are just all lit up the entire time. And those are different choices. If you're releasing plugins, by all means, ask me how to do that. I will tell you. If you want to use my stuff to build it, it is MIT open source, so all you got to do is credit it. And I believe that finishes the recompile of Verbity. This was actually a very strange jam, wasn't it? And now it's speeding up. Well, it was for a half a second there. Something happened. Now let's do a much older plug-in vibrato. I do hope that the search people are able to move on uh, updating what I've what I've got in their system because it's really kind of it should help what they do honestly. The updates that I did should help what they. I mean, they're using Decreca. Decreca calls random so constantly. So if anybody instantiates that, then that'll make Surge run poorly, and we don't need that. So I hope that they're willing to do the work to re-import all of this stuff and go. They feel that's a lot of work. I'm kind of looking at them going, ha, 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 ha. oh my sweet summer child, you have no idea. But that said, we're getting on towards finishing this. Vibrato done. We got Vinyl Dither. This is kind of a classic. You could even say that there might be a... It might warrant having a version of monitoring that uses it. I don't know. I haven't familiarized myself with it recently. And you need to 
be 32. Gotta click somewhere else, otherwise it won't take. X86, build, and done. All right, see you later, Mel. No sense in expecting large stream numbers when I haven't started doing the things people are asking me to do. Nobody's asking me to do this, I just am streaming it because, you know, I need to do it. And I think it's worthwhile, both the chance of talking to people, and also you need to see what I have to put up with sometimes. I get paid for a reason. If you needed to hire somebody to do this, I'm cheap at the price compared to what you would need to do if you needed to get somebody else to do all this. I wouldn't be able to hire somebody to do all this. What's going on in Air Windows Land Gamma? We're going to finish the Windows compiles today. Today. We're at Voice of the Starship 64 already. And I'm playing weird music because I just pitched something randomly and it turns out this is what it is. And I'm talking about a lot of things such as uh, Steinberg's choices with VST3 and uh, clap and getting tones because when I put out a uh, call on the Patreon asking what people wanted to see as far as live streams were concerned oh I done I, I screwed up Let's go and do that over again, shall we? I screwed that up. That's not good. This is getting to me, the very end of this. It's like I'm fighting to make sure that it doesn't go horribly wrong. This ought to do it. Oh, are you still? Okay, then there will be two people who voted for Minecraft. Go you. That seems fine. I put that up there because I knew that some people used to like it. It really isn't polling very well compared to everything else, but sometimes that's because you know, we're, if I stopped doing coding streams, I think people would be asking for them a lot more. It's kind of crazy because it's like, okay, Minecraft is supposed to be a chill stream. I don't necessarily get a chance to chill. My significant other is not happy about that, by the way. She recognizes the fact that I'm needing to beat myself into the ground to continue doing this. But I do have to beat myself into the ground to continue doing this to the extent of 32 things in the recycle bin since I started an hour ago. That need to get deleted. And it's not fair, but I mean, that's the entrepreneur thing for you. Like if you're trying to do something, it's always going to be harder than not doing something. Not making something not giving something is always going to be easier than making and giving and doing. It's just the kind of nature of the beast, really. So if you're committed to doing or giving or making or so on, it becomes your responsibility to figure out how you're going to make, how you're going to manage that. Like, what do you do to have that become a possible thing? How do you do that within your ethics and morals, what you've chosen to care about? And that's definitely challenging for me because I have strong feelings about a number of things that restricts my choices around those things. People who know me really well do know that. They know that uh, that's a struggle that I'm going through, working out how to manage this various stuff. Because it's never quite as it's, it's not as easy as people think. And that's the V's. Now, what's going on here? Is that actually real or if I missed something? I think it's just arranged differently. What have we got? Wider. Okay, that's why I didn't see it, because the word was too small. Let's switch this music to something else.
we are all in a final push, so how about one of the, how about a recent 140 beat per minute? That's aggressive. So this is going to get loud in a moment. And back over to here. We did successfully build Wider, which is a good plugin. This is a plugin from a while back. I could probably do a Wider 2 because it's not perfectly linear, this. It has nonlinearity in it, so it could do with some control. That said, some of my Wider stuff is being handled by Seriously 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of this stuff is based on the modal tempo guide. A lot of the things I was doing with arrangement could be uh, enlightened by the things I've been learning in the last couple of years. Like, I did arrangement. I've now got a new way of coming up with arrangements that should serve better. There's just, there's, there's a lot to everything, and the saving grace of it is it's interesting. It's interesting to dug in, dig into some of these things, to work out what's good, what works. And that was all of my W. <laughs> so now we're on to, I think pretty much everything on screen is all I've got left. I need to compile everything that you see here and then it's time to go and uh, upload it all to the places where I use it, at which point anybody can download it and you'll all be running a lot faster than you were before. That's the whole point of this exercise. So let's do it. <laughs> As Visual Studio chugs and is unable to do its thing. I would not mind running this in a faster computer as a virtual machine. The trouble is Parallels is acting the same way that Steinberg and everybody else is acting in where you can use a emulation, but unfortunately they're getting Adobe like about it and it is it is untenable. I'm using an old version of Parallels that is not a subscription service. That is ceasing to be possible because they're in a position of power where they can make it so that they can put any terms that they want and you have no recourse other than to use it because if you're moving on to Mac M1 that is the ability to arm wrestle people and force them to do things that they don't want to do and so that's what happens not like I'm happy about any of that but that's what people do it is my choice to not do things like that and we will see whether that choice of not doing things like that is such a fatal choice that it makes it impossible for me to continue. So far, so good. I am in fact continuing. You know, setting, setting pricing, choosing how you go about doing your things, running your business is a political act. You get to make choices around that stuff and it gets to be significant these things matter. And here I thought this jam was going to be really aggressive. Well, I bet it's going to be aggressive pretty soon. I'm looking at the waveform. There's a giant block coming right up. Which I believe is high volume drums or something. got here is sedative music. I should think you would be able to use console 7 without having to print effects with the updates. We'll see. I mean, if you did print effects, then you'd have things running even better. <coughs> Excuse me. 
My health is kind of medium breaking down a little bit, but not all that bad. I'm refusing to push so hard that it would actually hurt me. And we got a drum and bass beat. Good. As it should be. Like if I was tracking, one thing I would be able to do, in addition to things like this, is lay down something like this and fire up, you know, get the drum mics and things going, go upstairs to where the real drum kit is, have an arranged thing where it's a very specific sequence of, of events, very sequence, sequence of parts, play real drums through that sequence of parts and then edit it in such a way that it can switch back and forth between the machine drums and the real drums as I see fit. Which would mean that they would act as a sort of highlight. You'd switch into the human feel um, or out of the human feel on cue and that'd be the easiest way of doing that. And hey, we're on X. Looking good. Coming along. Visual Studio not responding very quickly, I must say. But that's fine. I just need to keep my attention together so that I can actually respond to it when it's able to be responded to. You know, I would I would like to be the kind of streamer, YouTuber, etc. Like there's a there's a guy, uh, Ethan Becker, who is an artist. I like his style. He takes advantage of um, horrible YouTube qualities and the garbage quality of general media discourse to behave obnoxiously and do obnoxious things, but really what's going on inside Ethan Becker is that he is a nice person and is trying to help. So he's making these sort of fake, bullying, weird behavior videos that are off-putting if you took it at face value, but it's not. It's not at face value. He's playing a character, and so it makes it a game. Now, that's not really how I behave. I have a hard time building anything off of inauthentic stuff, but people these days, they do not care about authenticness. Uh, John Lennon wanted to do that with the vocals once. It's in uh, Jeff Merrick's book. I would use my melt plugin. Really, there's no such thing because you can't hear through water. So that's not really... You know, it's... Uh, Actually, I lie. You're talking about a real experience. I don't know exactly what that would be, but I do know some of the characteristics. Yeah, so, so probably not melt. There's various things about how that would work, and I don't know how they would apply. Like, uh, underwater, the speed of sound through water is, I believe, much faster than it is through air. So echoing inside a swimming pool is going to be a lot weirder. It's like an ultra... Describe how it sounded. <coughs> Describe how it sounded and I might be able to do more for you. Because it's an amusing thought. It's like just the sort of thing that I would do. You know, like table that thought. Because it seems possible, it's just that nobody wants to do that as their next big release, because nobody would buy one. But I don't have to worry about that, so I can make you one. Probably a lot of band limiting. How are we doing with this stuff? Very nice, very nice. <laughs> the 
Yeah, because the reverberations would be in a space that is much seemingly smaller and more reflective than you expect. It's a big swimming pool, but the speed of sound through water is going to be different than through air, so it's going to act like a tiny chamber. Maybe that's what it would be. And kind of low pass, but it's, everything's being transformed in an unusual way. Having like tests, test tones into that situation would be the most helpful thing. They're more like test sounds than test tones. You know, like a clave. Click. And you'd hear what the clave did. It's like... This kind of jam is the kind of jam that explains why I shouldn't be doing kind of jams. The bits that are the same are so relentlessly monotonous that eventually you'd need to have a different song come up which is also monotonous but different. And since I don't do that, you have to be listening for the variations, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if there's convolution reverb impulses out there simulating underwater sound, but it's a plausible idea. It's just like, well, but did somebody do that? They might not have done it because they didn't want to, or they didn't think that it was worth anything. So again, you're at my mercy. You need to get me to do it because I'm willing to do it even though nobody thinks they can sell it. Which is interesting in its own right, it's like, if you can get into some things like that, and I have a willingness to do them, then it's like, okay, I'm going to hold your dream hostage. I'll do the thing that you want and nobody else is willing to do it, which makes it more valuable. And to some extent, I think this is why I have the Patreon going, rather than having it not be anything is because there, it, it, that is out there. The fact that, yes, I am doing things, and I'm doing things that other people won't. So you can't get them from other people. Other people need to pay, you know, charge for those things and have them be saleable, and I don't have to worry about that. At least in the model that I've been on. If I did start having to worry about all that, it would be a very restrictive thing. So I guess I would put that out to people is a sort of general thought, like, do you like what you have in me? Then stick around, you know, continue supporting because good luck finding it anywhere else. And that's an arrogant sounding thing, but I mean, if people were doing some of these things for me so I didn't have to do them, I would be quite delighted. I'd be like, okay, I'll download the the plugins that sound great and do exactly what I want from somebody else. Cool, thanks. But they're not, so I have to make them. It would be the same if people really wanted music that did this. Which they kind of don't, so that's fine. But, uh... If you have something going on that is needed and super unusual, it puts you in a special position. If you're willing to accept it, that is. I'm not always willing to accept it. I don't like to twist people's arms and demand money. It's distasteful to me. Which is why I've never done it. And that has set the tone of how well I've done money-wise. I've done much better in other respects, but money-wise, yeah. Limitations. There's limitations to how far the it goes. And I can never tell whether highlighting that makes sense or whether I'm better off just making it seem as if I have no limitations and can do anything. Because it's like people regarding... Hello, what have I just done? Did I do all of these? Yes, I did. People are super not interested in me going, I can't do the thing. They're very interested in me going, I can do anything that you imagine, just let me know. That's what people are interested in. They're not interested in hearing about my limitations.
moving along. I know, right? Yeah, Span is very cool. That said, I could come up with things that would work as a spectrum analyzer that would be worthwhile. Visual tools where you can dial in like all of this stuff to a large extent. The music, if you want to call this music, I'm going to make this change to something else, frankly. Actually, I'll just skip ahead. Okay, that's crazy. We'll get that little mode. I would... Oh god, you're feeding me more catchphrases. No! No more catchphrases. The ones I've got are already good enough. That's actually not my message anyhow. It's like... I'm here doing the what I do the way that I do it because there are limits and I don't like it. I don't like people being subjected to limits. In a lot of ways, I think that you should be able to do various things no matter who you are or where you come from, which is why I'm choosing to do the stuff that I do. And it matters. I think it matters. I don't know whether it gets through. The thing is, you go into like impoverished areas and people might not have any idea about me because the stuff is too plain and it's too cheap and no GUIs and what they really want is they're only looking at like stuff with fancy face plates and large elaborate GUIs because they're listening on earbuds so they can't hear the difference and it's like where you start where you start with stuff like that you will get people who are really kind of in a jam and have great limitations which are not their fault but as a result, they may sometimes be drawn to just images of wealth and opulence and people who are exploiting them by using that desire. And that I consider to be a sad thing, but there's nothing much I can do about it other than keep doing the things that I do, knowing that it's putting tools in people's hands who need and deserve access to tools. And then the rest of it is just like, not everybody has to listen. The world is a funny place. Like I'm very inspired by the, the synthesizer maker, Seat Lombard. So Peter Blasser. Peter Blasser makes these synthesizers that make a lot of noises like what I'm doing in this very jam or more so. They are not very melodic, but they're handmade out of like circuit boards and, and wood. And he chooses uh, sassafras as his preferred tone wood for synthesizers, which don't actually accept vibrations from the wood for tone. So it's kind of a moot point, but the tone wood that he likes for synthesizers is sassafras because it has sass. That kind of tells you everything about the guy. He's a bit of a wise ass. And he sells these for thousands upon thousands of dollars. They're kind of little art objects. So how do you switch over to being something like that from being somebody like Chris from Air Windows? I don't honestly know, but I do know that part of the requirement would be making physical things, like handmade physical crafted things of a good quality because you can't make software do that. If you were trying to sell software along those lines, that's like cheating. That's like stealing. Demanding that kind of money for bits in a computer. The beautiful thing about software is you can copy it around if you want. With the sheer scope of what you can make, Another side effect is that if you can make everything, you're not going to make anything. The restriction is what causes uh, results to happen. This 
is about the weirdest, silliest music I've made in the last year. I don't even remember what was in my head this day. I think, however, that this is the Bastel stuff. I gotta love Bastel for just making the crazy noises. Will always be something of a fan of the crazy noises. That or it might be uh, dope for. I'm not entirely sure. It's probably pastel. I don't know, the waveform looks kind of symmetrical to me, so maybe not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you are selling your presence to people and going, oh, hey, please support my Patreon and so on, it's not simply a matter of doing infinite numbers of things, but also being able to give people the feeling that they can do stuff or choose stuff. Like, rather than just, here is a big pile of everything, have fun, it's inspiring people to do things and try things. I'm comfortable with that. I think that maybe the upcoming live streams will be a good way to get more into that kind of thing. Because what's being asked for is really pretty clearly along those lines. Making good progress. We got six plugins left out of 290. Not bad. And it's only 2:30. We're definitely going to be uploading these by the time we're done. Yeah. This is this is music that argues with you. Where's my build menu? There you are. And now we're dubstep. Yay. Yeah, jams like this are great fun, although the idea of selecting stuff out of them is somewhat fatally flawed. I was having that argument with somebody the other day that the whole idea of um, jamming wildly in the belief that you can edit it together into something that is a cohesive idea is not really a thing. I don't think it's really a thing. I think the jam is the thing. And there are times when that will be cool and there are times when that will be kind of lame. It feels like in this instance, it's a little on the lame side. It's just same beat and we're doing crazy electronic stuff over it. No editing. When it does the wrong thing, we're stuck with it for like five minutes. And that's okay in its context, but that also explains a great deal about why people simply didn't keep coming to these live streams and asking for more. You show up to this and you're like, okay, that's interesting. Carry on, keep doing that. And you wander off because you're like, the hell. I mean, the, the trick is figuring out who you are and what you do, and then managing the need to, like, gear down and do it consistently, reliably, persistently. Persistence is very important. As you can see here, as I finish a enormous recompile project so that people can have a boost in performance over everything that I make. That's persistence. There's no reason that I'd be compelled to go back and do every plugin this way, but this is what I choose to do. Four to go. I'm not going to know what to do with myself when I'm actually done. I'll be like, holy crud. Now what's my life going to be like? It's been like this 
for so many days on end that I can't remember it being any different. Life is nothing but building things in, in Visual Studio. With my head hunched over so that my neck hurts. That will end up stopping. That'll be amazing. I've usually not shown people this part. Usually this is just what I do rather briefly. It takes about twice, maybe three times this long to do it for the first time. And that's when I have done each plugin and I'm going through and doing the variations on it like this. This is what it's like. But it's just one at a time rather than 290 at a time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, there's somebody in particular that I'm spending some time with. She's actually an interesting challenge because on the one hand, it's uh, wonderful to spend time with, quick-witted, good to pitch ideas with, but there's a lot of proofing myself that has to happen, and that can be very demanding. And that's because she's far too much like me. Hard to satisfy, hard to impress. Wouldn't have it any other way, but it poses its own special challenges. Evo Pass 2, hey, we are cranking along. Alt F4. The routine has to be exactly the same without any departures, otherwise I might miss something. I can spot check in how many plugins there are in each of these folders. Guess what, last two. moving. Skip the music. Come on, my visual studio, wake up. of the second to last one that I got to do. No, not two, 32. There we go. Building the 32. Option F4 closes this. Here's my doles. first, somewhat more efficient version of this code, to the recycle bin with you. Last one. Everybody is so into alien kittens, I really don't get it. It's like, what? I've always liked these chords. This particular tone is like my music uh, thing modular chord organ with the high sample rate. Going into a Blue Lantern Asteroid Operator filter, it's a crazy filter. The thing is completely bonkers. The stuff that it's capable of doing is just unreasonably nuts. And so I get these sounds out of it. it sounds like some kind of giant Hammond organ overloading itself. While I'm in the middle of chattering about that, guess what? I quietly built the 64, and then I built the 32, and then as long as I do have dull files to drag over to their relevant places, 
the procedure continues to go rather quickly to the Ermagerd. We're done. Got there. Got there. I'm kind of in shock. I can't believe how hard that was. Look, 19 items being deleted. And what that means is that we can tell this virtual machine to shut down because we are not using it any longer. To my great delight. Parallels. And here's what we got. And when VST working, guess what? We don't need this any longer. Now, the next series of events here is. USB stick. And I believe what I can do here is all of these end up being zip files. Although they end up being zip files with a. Pr no, I've, I've still got some stuff to do here. So tell you what. Let's copy this stuff all under Startle if it will let me. I think it's got enough space. get there but some of this stuff I need to do on the other laptop which you can't see so we'll probably switch the camera around modern things copy stuff faster than this One of the things I should be asking my Patreon is, of the people who asked for particular things, what days of the week are they available? Because this is not really a general thing. Specific people were asking me for stuff, and there's going to be, like, specific times that they would be able to show up for it. It's not necessarily just random. Like, oh, you would like sound design? Therefore, I'm going to do it on Tuesday. Well, maybe the five people who wanted sound design aren't available on Tuesday. So I'm going to need to do a little more communicating as far as that's concerned, which is also something that you should do if you're on stream. Now, um, if there's things that you need on particular days, then let me know and I can try to arrange that. It's kind of like the constraints thing up at the top of the screen there. It'll work better if I have constraints on how I go about doing this. because then I can design around that and it'll be more interesting for me. Meanwhile, time to get this going. I don't need to use, I need to print up new paper for some of these. This is my instructions for compiling various things. But what I need here is get ready to do this. slow this is. Copying all these things over to an SD card. Go figure. I'll sit over here so you can see me a little bit.
There is, shall I say, an elaborate multi-step process about going through all this. And you will share that too. Firstly, let's eject the shuttle. If this worked, I don't need those folders up there. Weird chords, eh? And here, shuttle, this will be loaded much more easily than before. The laptop I'm getting to replace this really early M1 will have an SD card thingy in it, and that might make things a little bit more pleasing. And let's see. How about let's select all of these. That's not what I'm going to want to do, is it? Bear with me in figuring out what I'm doing. So I've already done Linux VST, so I don't think I need to do that. How about we just close all those and go from there? Retro Mac AUs, I believe I've got that covered as well. Date modified, March 3. Or March 2. And that would be because I compiled them. I see a bunch of March 2, that looks about right. Some of these say today, that seems weird. I don't know why it would be saying that. just a minute ago. That's weird. You know what? I think I'm going to trust this. Or we could go through and do them all over again. How about that? comfortable doing that. It's dumb, but still. So I'm gonna copy those to the trash. Xcode doesn't need to be running. Here, here's the thing where I need to be keeping track of what I'm doing, which isn't always easy or straightforward. So I'll just do the best I can with it, I guess. One thing about it is copying things over on the newer computer faster. Um, I'm making these collections that I'm letting people download. And I'm uncomfortable about the idea that I might be failing to include the ones that I've done. So I'm going with the collections that I actually do. Yeah, there's going to be a plugin. But there's still going to be a plugin. It's, it's going to be uh, dirt. Another distortion. People seem to be very happy about Edge, so it's like, okay, well then have another one like that. Meanwhile, we are slowly trying to copy files and running into a big problem, apparently, where it's stalling out. Can you not? Yeah, I have that to do. I don't know how long it's going to take me for the rest of the today, and I don't know why this move has just stalled. It's like the... Uh, the card has gotten sick. And that's bad. So I'll leave that there for a while and see whether it straight eventually straightens itself out. It did. I don't know what this little problem was, but eventually it got through. It's moving items, so I can't really half do it. I have to let the process go through. And it's getting stuck a lot, but... 
so far, even though it's stalling and stopping and the, the SD card is acting like it's broken, which is the last thing I want. We're still getting there. With patience. I hope. I mean, maybe I lie. Maybe it's all broken and I'm not going to be able to do it at all. In which case, that's why I didn't delete everything from the previous computer when copying it. That would be sad. I would not like to do that. Delete everything from the previous computer and then lose all of my work because I was trying to copy it on an SD card that was broken? That would not be good at all. But no. No. Got there. You, little SD card, are not as reliable as I would have hoped. Which is unfortunate because I'm going to be needing to use it again momentarily. So, I have an upcoming folder. And I need to get my stuff out of here and into the upcoming folder. For literally all of these. And then I need to copy what text over? No, oh, well, that's not a great... That does not please me. I hope it's not over-engineered. I hope it's actually good, because it looks like I'm going to be stuck with it, whatever it is. Now, what must we copy? I got Isolator built, but we're not releasing it just yet. Isolator 2, rather. We've got... Let's see, what else? Three of the stereo things. Those are still in the, the pipeline. Stereo chorus, stereo doubler, and stereo ensemble. And I think that's it. There's a cool synth noise. Haven't done that. This should be everything, but not including stuff that's in the pipeline and hasn't come out yet, and it looks like it is. So that's going to be a Linus Linux VSTs ready to use. Same deal for Retro Mac. Got to get Isolator out of here. You'll get it soon enough, never you mind. I D I Isolator 2. An older item already exists. Good. I want the newer item. That's the one. And then the, the stereos. Here they are. Once I get a computer that will support it, you'll be able to watch this too. I'm working on it. Quite looking forward to uh, attending to that. But right at the moment, I don't have that on board yet. Retro Mac. Same deal. I need to get Isolator out of there. Isolator 2, specifically. Isolator just got more efficient. It got better. Then, the stereo plugins that haven't come out yet. Retro Windows 32s. These ones in my collection are actually flagged with red because these are the ones where I'm replacing the ones that need to be there that are not updated yet. So now when I do that, what I'm getting is a change in the folder status that I'm working in because I'm replacing the stuff that was not done this way. to live, and these other ones too, or at least getting them close to where they need to live. One more, WinVST, 64, isolator, 2, got it, good, then stereo chorus, stereo doubler, stereo ensemble, all 64.
we got there. So now upcoming is up to speed. The next few weeks of these things are going to go properly and have plugins that are written correctly. Okay, still not, not done yet. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. I need to copy what.txt over to these places. So, and that's going to be for the upcoming plugin, so you're going to get a little sneak peek, maybe. In fact, I'm pretty sure, yep, yep. So, if you are watching, uh, you can have the plugin now. I'm going to release it tonight, but you'll be able to get it now. Just download these things, and uh, it won't be there for uh, the signed Mac AU and VST yet. But if you're using anything else, you can have the plugin now. Firstly, what? And by that I mean the file, what text? Option drag. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And just for the heck of it, signed once. Which do not need me to do that. And zip files. Linux VSTs. Retro Mac AUs. Takes longer to compile. Retro Mac VSTs. Retro Win32. Win64. SD card, please work, SD card, because you're my only hope, uh, one of them anyway, and command drag to make it copy them, we're getting there, we're getting closer and closer to doing the uploads that I want, I'll let you know when I've done it. empty trash while I'm at it, Check that SD card. And now I can close this laptop down, the M1. I've still got stuff to do with it. I need to do the assigned ones. That's fairly straightforward, though. It's not going to be as tough. SD card goes in here. It's now on the main computer, even. So let's pick up this laptop. We're going to go back to uh, full screen. And uh, bear with me while I shuffle plugins around, I'm trying to figure out where my things are. Go to the, the final thingy here. I'm going to take a moment because I'm sending a message. If I say I'm going to message somebody at 3, I like to message them at 3, literally. And just instantly turned 301, so I just got in barely into the wire. And we're going to let that noise keep happening. We're going to switch away from something to something else. Bear with me. I'm very scattered. This has been a heck of an experience, all of this. 
Let's option click that to the desktop too. There is shuttle. If I hit command A on this keyboard and then command drag it to the desktop, these are the things that need to be uploaded. And I got them there. As the weird music fades off into strangeness, which is the way that we're going to depart the stream today. And the next things I need to do are to run an FTP client. And my host and the WordPress thingy. And these need to be uploaded. 104 megs of stuff, not counting the uh, stuff. 41 seconds remaining. Once I've done this, I got the media fire to do, and then we are done. So, in moments, or in half a minute, you would be able to download uh, the Linux, both the Retro Max, and both of the Windows off of my website in moments. I will let you know when that's alive. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. It's up on my website. Now, quit out of the FTP program go over to Mediafire for the same deal. Plugins backup, same thing. Currently uploading. Replace the old files. This one says it's 99.15 megs, 20%. It's going, it's going, we're getting there. This has been a big deal. The, the signed Mac stuff is not going to be this kind of performance, I think, because I'm just gonna do that when I can. It's not necessarily gonna be today, but uh, I will do it. Sixty seven percent, sixty eight, sixty nine, seventy. We're getting there. Eighty percent. Ninety percent. Cheers, folks. This has been a journey. Verifying one file. Got there. I have been Chris from Air Windows, updating 290 plugins across five formats so that everybody can have a performance boost and be able to do more with what I give you for free. Thanks for your attention. I'm going to start doing streams that are more interesting now, now that I'm not doing this. This has just taken over my life so hardcore that I thought that I was going to share my experience with it. And uh, it may not be, it's like, here, have a glimpse into like what I will do for you. Uh, going forward, it's going to be more about like, what can I do to entertain? But uh, this has been my world for the last week. And it's been a trip to be sharing it with y'all. Hope you like the plugins. I'm sure they're all gonna run a lot faster than they did. 
And that's the whole point. Talk to you later. I'm done for the day. Bye-bye. Oh, except, except for uploading um, Dirt plugin tonight, which will include the, the individual download will include the signed stuff, even though I don't have those overall downloads fixed yet. The, the independent download will in fact have signed versions of that, and that's coming tonight. But if you're here, you just got it ahead of time. Enjoy. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.